Amen. Good morning, church. Reading from Matthew 10, from verse 24. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher, and a servant like his master. If they are called the master of his house, Bezalbub, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, and hidden that will not be known. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, and what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And do not, and not two sparrows sell for a copper coin, and not of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, we pray. Amen. Last week we were working through the Gospel according to Matthew, and we're reading from chapter 9, verse 35 through to the end. And uh, this week we continue in chapter 10, a part of Matthew's Gospel where Jesus sends out the disciples to do the ministry or to continue the ministry that he has been doing. An important lesson for the disciples as they work under their apprentice, uh, apprentice to Jesus as the, his disciples to do the work that he's done. And so we learn from Matthew 9.35 that the work that Jesus has been doing is the work of proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. Now we know that the main work that Jesus had to do is not curing diseases and healing sicknesses. And so often we sometimes, in a situation like the COVID situation, we might think that Jesus must come and cure all the diseases and take away all the problems of this moment away. That was not the main message of Jesus. The main message of Jesus was the kingdom of God. And the coming of the kingdom of God was a, a turning upside down of all the things that, that were the way that they were and a, and a restoration of justice. And so Jesus sends out his disciples saying, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. What they are going to go and do is actually recruit more laborers to work for the kingdom of God. So the disciples are laborers. And so are those people that the disciples go and reach out to, building up a great community of Christians who are going to live in a different kind of way. I, when I think of the harvesters, I think of James chapter 3, verse 18, where James says, A harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. This idea of a, a shalom community, a shalom world where peace is made, where people go out to sow in peace and to reap in peace and to bring a life that is good for everybody. As we look at the economy in this time of, of, of COVID, we realize how valuable those jobs that we call essential jobs are and how futile some other jobs are. And so we realize that there's a, an imbalance in the economies of the world that what is important, truly important, is not regarded as important as it should be. And when lives hang in the balance, we realize how important lives are compared to the trinkets and things that money can buy. And so we change our priorities. And this is an important time for us to think about how we prioritize about wealth and money and what is our economy really based on. And so this harvest of righteousness, this sowing in peace, is a different kind of lifestyle that the Christians are called to live in, that the disciples are called to teach, and that we are called to be a part of. Harvesters are people who spread the gospel of peace and recruit others to spread that gospel of peace with them. And so from verses 5 to 15 of Matthew chapter 10, Jesus gives the disciples their mission and then in verse 16, he warns them that it's going to be difficult. I'm sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. In a world where people act like wolves, where they try to devour sheep, 
where you have to be a bit of a wolf to survive. We are called to be sheep, to be innocent, but crafty. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I think I understand what Jesus means when he says you are to be like sheep in the midst of wolves. To be innocent in the way that you behave, but to watch out for the world that we live in. He sends them out like sheep in the midst of wolves, knowing that they will be persecuted for what they do, for what they teach, for what they say, because they're going to speak out against that which is, which is normal, that which is accepted socially in the time, and they're going to say that we need to do something different. They're going to speak about justice and say, you should really pay these people a little more because they are, their work is essential. They're going to speak to the religious leaders about their lack of care for the poor. They're going to speak about aspects of faith and life that are so easily rejected and neglected because we don't want to hear them. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, Timothy reads, People will not put up with sound doctrine. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires. And I've got to say, as a minister, I sometimes want to hold back on what I should say because I feel like I should maybe tickle your ears without offending them. But if we're going to preach the gospel, if we're going to listen for the true gospel, then we need to be prepared to be offended, to be made uncomfortable, to, to, to be made to think again about the way that we are living and change some of our priorities. And so Jesus reminds them that he has been persecuted. He has been called names. He has been accused of being the devil himself. He says in Matthew 10 verse 25, If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So the disciples are, are being prepared to be maligned to be persecuted to be to have bad things said about them because they're going to go and preach a gospel that is difficult to hear and the first thing that those who hear are going to want to do is discredit them and find any reason to ignore what they are saying so we should prepare prepare ourselves for for two things that happen when you hear this message that you are going to react in yourself in a certain way there are many things in the scriptures that we don't want to read because they're just too difficult. They challenge us too, deep, too deeply in the way that we live too deeply, that we just hear them and we throw them away. But we try to memorize those things that encourage us and, and make us feel better about ourselves. There's nothing wrong with that. But it is also important to hear the difficult message of the scriptures. On the other hand, when you preach this message, prepare to be treated in a certain way. People won't necessarily like what you have to say. So we need to think about how we react. We don't like the idea of changing our values, changing our, our shopping habits, changing our friendship habits, changing the ways that we treat others around us. We, we're so ingrained in the way that we do things that we think that everything that we do is fine and there's something wrong with everybody else except us. We need to invite God's Holy Spirit to soften our hearts so that we don't think about what's wrong with others but we think about what's wrong in ourselves and we learn to sow in peace to produce the harvest of righteousness. On the other hand, if we're going to speak this message and Francis of Assisi says, preach always and if necessary, use words, make sure your deeds accompany your words, be prepared for people to not like you, to not like what you have to say, to argue with you for absolutely no good reason, to, to find that, that you're not the most popular. Now, we can't be like those kind of Christians who, who steal the office stationery and print tracts on it and then complain that we're persecuted when we get in trouble at work. We can't be those people who are, who are so offensive in the way that we proclaim the news that, that you can't blame anyone for not liking us. We should speak the truth in love. But when you speak the truth in love, prepare yourself not to be the most popular person on the block. Don't expect everyone to thank you or to like you for telling the good news of God's kingdom and God's righteousness. But Jesus reminds us not to fear. As you go out and do what you're called to do, do not be afraid. Don't seek popularity. Verse 26 says, don't fear humans. Don't fear others. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered. And nothing secret that will not become known. 
God's justice will come to bear in the world. God will show us all up for all of our wrongs and all of our brokenness. Do not be afraid, he reminds us. You are of more value than many sparrows. And this applies to all of us, but thinking especially of us who are fathers on this Father's Day, that we have a job to do, to spread the good news of the gospel of peace to our children, to make sure that our children grow up in a world characterized by Jesus' justice and peace. It's very easy to be the kind of father your kids want you to be. It is easy to be the man that your friends or your employers want you to be. But being the father or the person that God wants you to be is not so easy. If you speak up for what is right, and if you do what is right, and if you show your children how to do what is right rather than tell them, and each of us who is a parent knows that we fail every step of the way, but isn't that what walking is, falling forwards and lifting yourself up again? If we learn to live fearlessly the way that we ought to live, we'll raise our children in a world that is more fair and more just and more good. And our children will see that what we say and what we do match up. It is up to each of us to become workers and sowers in this field of righteousness and see God's kingdom grow. And finally, in this difficult season, as we face difficult times, it's good for us to be encouraged by these beautiful words of Matthew chapter 29, Matthew chapter 10, verse 29 to 31. These words where Jesus says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. As much as fathers love their children, God loves his children so much more. As much as God knows what happens to every sparrow, as he knows every hair on your head, we do not need to be afraid. Because, Jesus says, you are of more value than many sparrows. So invite us to be courageous, to do what is right, to live a life that, that values the right things at the right amounts and show our children and show ourselves what it means to sow in righteousness and harvest in righteousness. Amen.